Hello. Uh, this is going to be lesson one of chapter two of Who's Afraid of Braille Music? So this is um, a continuation of a series I started a long time ago. So go back to video number one to kind of get uh, an idea. Um, but all the information of how to get the material, book, whatever, is in that very first video. And this is coming, uh, it's, it's a read-through slash commentary from the perspective of a, I guess, I don't know if you want to call it a former blind music student or what, but, um, with some university experience in the realm of music, um, I am hoping to give some insight as to why some of the things in here are done. Uh, some of the things that I would recommend based on other research that I've done and just personal experience. So that's basically what this is. And hopefully this will help um, parents, students, and teachers um, get a better handle on music, uh, music literacy for blind people. Um, um, so yeah. Okay. So let's dive right in and read through this. Uh, chapter two, let's read music lesson one. Okay. I'm going to read. Yeah. I'm going to read through this and comment on it too. <laughs> Okay, in this chapter, we will first learn to read braille numbers that represent little musical melodies. In this way, you will see what it is like to read with one hand and play with the other. Uh, we will also try to sing the melodies, uh, oh, the musical numbers as we read. This is known as sight singing. Uh, once you can read the numbers as you sing or play, uh, actual braille music will, actual braille music notation will be very easy. Comments. <laughs> um, as I mentioned in other videos in this series and in a couple of book reviews of braille literacy for music, I would highly recommend that the students stay away from a musical instrument until they can read. Um, so this has like, oh, let me think here. So if a student is, let's say they're uh, they're, they're, they're learning how to play piano. Um, if they are learning how to play piano, um, there's a lot of things pertaining to piano that needs to be addressed. Um, that if the student is occupied by reading notes, uh, figuring out what, I don't know, one, four, five, six, figuring out what that symbol is. Uh, they're going to be, you know, they're just going to build up tension. Uh, their, 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 their fingers might lock up, get stiff. Their reading hand is going to get stiff, you know, just because of all the expectation that's put upon them. Um, they're trying to learn how to read and learn how to speak, essentially play an instrument at the same time, um, if the student just focuses on reading the music and singing the, the music, um, it will be more easier to transfer that information to an instrument, whether it be piano, violin, whatever. Um, so, um, 
also this will help with uh, if they are reading music and singing it they will be working on their oral skills and they're not just relying on essentially pressing buttons um, that's essentially what a piano is you're just pressing buttons and <laughs> yeah um, whereas if they are singing they have to stop and think okay if I'm singing um, do and the next pitch is re how is that going to sound what does that sound like or if I'm singing do and I need to sing me you know the student has to stop and think and and listen in their mind's ear to get those pitches this is building a crucial skill of uh what's called audiation when music can be heard in the mind even though there's no external music playing in the background or anything um so that's what I would recommend. Um, another thought on the sight singing, uh, sight singing away from the piano. Um, these first opening melodies and melodies beyond this, um, when a student is first learning to read music, uh, the music is going to be very simple. Uh, you know, four, eight measures long, nothing, nothing too detrimental. Uh, some of the songs might be songs that they, excuse me, that they already know, that they have heard of. Um, and when they are singing the music, uh, because they are singing, they are taking that information in instantly through their ear so later that day um they might still have a remnant of that melody in their head they can go to the piano and just play it off the top of their head because they've already sung it um and experience from uh printed notation um, I don't have a lot of braille music to explain, to experience this with, but I have no doubt that it would work even better with braille, uh, for students who are blind and visually impaired. Um, I was studying with a gentleman in years ago, and one of the things he had me do was memorize my piano music away from the piano now this music was of like Chopin Beethoven um Schubert very it's it it's not easy music that one can just pick up look at a couple times and yep I have it memorized <laughs> uh this is very complicated music um but he he had me memorize it away from the piano and only when i had a section of it memorized then i could go and work at the piano with the memorized music and if needed the score now the first couple times it was really hard because i was using more brain power i was using uh, more eye power, <laughs> more, more eye, eye, eye stuff, you know, memorizing with printed music because I didn't have braille. Um, and so, but after I got a segment of it memorized, I went to the piano and I literally, I could just sit down at the piano and play the passage it wasn't perfect but i could play through it reasonably well and the whole point of um my mentor at the time having me do this was to reduce 
what I strain I needed to do at the piano. Um, essentially, I had all the I strain beforehand <laughs> memorizing. Um, and then when I went to the piano, I really didn't have to look at the music because I had it memorized. Um, and so the concept here with Braille is just the same. If the student can sing the music, um, they will be able to internalize those melody pitches and go to the piano and play them. Um, if that is their desire, if they are encouraged to, to do that. Okay. So enough with that. Um, read the music, sight, sing it, sing it. Um, and then later apply it to the piano. Uh, that's what I would recommend. Obviously, uh, I believe this is uh, Richard Tesh. He I mean, he would have students go to the piano and play the music. So just based off this book, that's what he wants people to do. Okay, so uh, workshop assignments and exercises. Uh, thinking of middle C up to G as numbers one through five, place your thumb on middle C at the piano and play the following melodies. Uh, take it slow and steady. Uh, play, or, hold on. <laughs> I had a sneeze. Okay. Uh, pause or breathe between number groups and when hy uh, and when there follows a hyphen. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the hyphens are. Um, I am wondering if the hyphens are meant to represent a pitch or a note that is held one count longer than all the others. Um, that is my basic deduction based off what the uh, melodies are the melodic groupings like in number one it's got four numbers but in all the other groups it has only three but they all have hyphens so yeah okay so uh i'm going to come over to the keyboard and we're gonna play through these <clears throat> Now, all of these we're going to do in C, as he says. And it says to take it slow and steady. So I'm going to use a metronome. And I would recommend having a metronome to help the student learn about uh, just the basic pulse. Um... Perhaps you could have the student tap their foot or clap their hands just to get the internalization of the click of the metronome. Um, but continuing with uh, the Braille music exercise here, I'm going to start with my thumb on C and just play the music as it's written. <laughs> Uh, the hyphens, I'm just going to hold the previous pitch out for one count. So there's going to be like in the second group of numbers where it says five. You're going to hear two metronome clicks on that um, and on that pitch. And the same with the next measure and the next one. So here we go with number one. And that is that. Um, you could kind of tell there was a couple uh, phrase or two in there. Um, the first one being, uh, what is my, the first one being after the second, uh, second group of numbers. Uh, that's a thought. This is a new thought. Oops. Uh, 
I'm going to do that again. I'm also going to mark in here where these phrases are. I'm just going to put a line there, and I'm also going to put a line in the Braille music, and I'm going to leave that up. Um, so each of these is a phrase, and in music notation, what we do in printed music is we put like a, uh, an arched curve and in Braille, you could do the same, but there is a symbol for Braille with how to do those arched curves. But I think that's a little bit later, advanced, more advanced beyond this book. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to, I'm going to do number one again with these phrases in mind. That's how that works. Uh, it does have the Braille music here, so uh, this melody could be written out or reproduced in Braille easily with a slate and stylus or a brailler. Um, and the student could practice reading it in Braille with the numbers. Um, let's oops. Let's move on to number two. Uh, so again, we've got a very long phrase, a very long phrase. So again, I'm just going to play this. Uh, one, one click of the metronome is going to be one number. If there's a hyphen, you're going to hear another click. And that is how that one goes. Um, again, I will mark out the phrasing. Um, whoops, I just marked out the number. I don't want to do that. Do, 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 Okay, there it is. So there's the marking there. And there it is in the Braille. Um, again, uh, these can be used for like sight singing. You could possibly use them for dictation, too. Uh, the previous lesson to talk about music dictation. So uh, instead of the st student getting a clean copy, the student will have to write their music and get their copy that way. Um, so uh, this one, it's basic two phrases. Um, I'm not going to go into the high musical knowledge of everything but basically the first phrase ends on a dominant and then it goes back to the tonic um it's basic musical stuff okay um the next one i'm going to put that away uh, the next one should be relatively fun for the student um i'm gonna just play it i'm not gonna say anything I'm just going to play the numbers. And that is that. Uh, sorry about the biff in the middle of the phrase. I was looking, um, <laughs> I was looking ahead, which is one of the kind of rough things about your eyes being a little bit ahead of your fingers. You kind of, yeah, you jump stuff. Um, again, there are two phrases. 
And let me mark those out. The first one is um, here. Whoops, I almost blocked out that number. Uh, there. That's one. And then the second one is obviously the after that. And in Braille, the phrase is, again, at the end of, almost at the end of the first line. Um, so again, these can be used for either uh, the, the teacher can write these, write these out or else it could be used for dictation um you could possibly start with number three if i mean the student would recognize it it would give them a little bit more confidence um but in general i mean they're all good little melodies um and so yeah these are basically the student is reading the music at the piano this is obviously what this little book recommends but obviously um i recommend the student read and sing the music then apply it to piano uh this is how a lot of uh a lot of the great composers worked they learned a theory and then they learned to apply that to whatever instrument they were playing and that's why many of them could just play a plethora of different instruments. I think Beethoven, he could play, oh gosh, obviously piano. Um, I think he did organ a little bit, uh, a violin, um, Bach, he did organ, um, obviously organ, harpsichord, lots of keyboard instruments. Mozart, he could probably play anything you, you give him. Um, so a lot of these musicians were very versatile in their musical abilities because they already knew how to read music notes. And the same is true today. If you can, uh, if the student can learn how to read the music and learn how to sight sing it and, you know, read it well, um, they essentially, they would, they, they could pick up any instrument and play that music on that instrument. I mean, they'd have to learn the foundations of how to play the instrument. Uh, but once they, like if they're learning piano, um, they could easily apply their piano skills to another keyboard instrument, like a harpsichord or the organ. Um, and so, yeah. Okay, so continuing with this uh, little thought here. I don't want that line there. Um, the uh, last couple thoughts in here are, now, read the same melodies in different ways. So now they're going to introduce um, reading the melodies using solfege and using... Um, the, the, the letter names and things like that. So being versatile in which system to read. Um, this time, as you read the numbers, sing the tunes. First, play along on the piano. Then try it without the piano. And they give you the different options. One in solfege, in syllables, solfege, do, re, mi, etc., uh, then they give you the numbers, which one, two, three, etc., and then the letters, uh, C, D, E, etc. <laughs> okay, um, so this would basically, uh, if I were to take this third melody, um, if I were to, let's see, they say, uh, First, play along at, on the piano, then try it without. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'll just do a couple measures. So if I were to learn, learning, if I were to read this and sing this at the piano, I would first give myself a starting pitch. And, well, first what I might do is give myself my tonic. Of course, obviously, a teacher may have to do this if they can.
So that basically just established the key that I'm in. So this is my starting note. So I could first start out with playing the melody as I am feeling it. Now, obviously I'm reading with my eyes, so <laughs> yeah. But student would be feeling with their fingers the, the braille. So this would sound like... Me, re, do, re, me, 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 re, 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 etc. And the student could play along the whole time while they're singing. Now, another option, um, he says, first play along with the piano, then then try the try, then try it without the piano. Um, you again, you would establish your key. So that's my key, and then I would give myself a starting pitch. And then I would read the notes. <laughs> mi, re, do, re, mi, 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 re, 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 mi, so, 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 little flat, mi, and then etc. Um, so that again to like I noticed when I was doing I could tell I wasn't on pitch so I played the pitch that I needed it's like oh yeah it needs to be so so whereas I was a little bit flat um so uh that is an option uh having the piano kind of like check your pitches um and this is how uh, sight singing is gradually developed. The student gives himself a pitch and they essentially, they start singing and they don't stop. <laughs> um, and if the student can check themselves or teacher could check the, the pitches throughout, make sure that the student is singing the right pitches or perhaps the student, if the student messes up and uh, the teacher is with them, the teacher could ask, um, you know, the teacher could stop the student at the wrong note and ask the student, was that the correct note? For example, if I were to do number two, if I were to sing number two and the the initial melody is, Etc. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so if I were to just sing these opening bars, and let's instead of singing this, I sang this. So if I sang, um, me so me so so, it, the teacher would stop me, and ask me, was I? singing the right pitch and I go oh I don't know was I <laughs> and the the teacher could then play the 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 correct pitch and then play the pitch that I was singing and the student could then hear that this pitch is lower than this than the the pitch that's that's there and then the student could then me so so and get the pitch right um so that could be um another option the teacher asking the student whether or not if they're singing the the, the correct pitches uh this will um engage them with actual listening to what it is that they are singing um so um, the more they listen to what they are singing, um, the better they will be at correcting mistakes sooner because they're not dependent on a teacher all the time. Um, another option could be to have the student record themselves singing and then going through it with the teacher 
and you know seeing whether or not if they were singing the right pitches or not um so you could do this with the solfege the numbers and the letters um okay the last little thought here says perhaps you and your teacher might write out some little melodies of your own for practice remember that the idea here is to touch the braille while you make music feel free to use either hand on the piano depending on which hand you prefer for reading braille uh, if if you read with your right hand uh then middle c will be with will be played with the pinky with your pinky in the left hand ending with your thumb on g or sol um so for this basically writing writing up little melodies um there's a whole bunch of stuff on the internet you can find free stuff type in like elementary uh sight singing examples um there's some really good uh music reading oops there's some really good uh music sight singing books for like elementary schools um i'm trying to think i uh purchased a set um i think it's called the johnson book or something let me look here uh, 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 uh. oh i just dropped the here it is it is the uh the johnson sight singing uh course and it comes in two volumes um i would say just get the student edition the teacher's edition you really don't need um unless you really want to um i just bought just the student edition for my personal library and study and things like that um so there's a johnson course uh johnson sight singing course i can try to link that down below um there is let me see uh the french book eh, you really don't want to do the french book there's a book called melodia this is on in the public domain you can get that off imslp i will put that in the link below those are probably the two best resources just based in my library that i have for elementary music examples um and again just uh pick out the pitches that you need obviously right now they're working with numbers one to five so you only need pitches soul to do or do to soul um and so you could just use whatever exercises you need for that and kind of look around on the internet there'll be stuff there um but yeah or else you could just compose your own they're really not that hard to come up with um you could possibly come up with some like children's tunes more children's tunes that they have out there um any of that stuff will will work uh so that concludes this lesson on basically it's like a pre step into uh learning to read music the the next lesson uh chapter two lesson two will actually introduce music braille like the actual shapes of music notes in braille so we're not going to be dealing with the numbers we're actually going to introduce the braille symbols so um i guess you could like share and subscribe and do all that stuff all that fun stuff okay we'll talk with you later